What is up guys, Rick is here with a new video and today another season of Battle of the Best, the final of Interdimensional Arena ended and once again, yeah, we kind of lost. Um, this time to God of Pain, which I uh, definitely don't mind. God of Pain, strong guy. I mean like the whole left side here of a group, absolutely insane. We got Ragnaru in here. Um, who is an absolutely strong team. We got some S tier copies in here. Even got an SSQH. Bloody way, look at that. There's even an SLFA. Man is definitely set for a uh, Star Expedition. Then we got God of Pain uh, with a few more S tier heroes. Uh, and I mean, like, dude's really been buying some stuff. Look at that. SLFA. We got S Ferrugreen Vessa, SSFX, SSQH, S Mockman, even an S Starving Jarrow, which, by the way, beautiful role. Uh, no idea why he doesn't use that anymore, but still, his team is strong. Apparently, he beat me. Uh, we got no 7 in here with few less S heroes, I think, but still, he got a plus DTV, which is insane. Um, and then there is me with a lot of power, but yeah, I mean, like, most of my copies are a minus, which on this side of the group feels surprisingly low. <laughs> Usually isn't, I guess. <laughs> but we lost and we want to watch the losing fight, of course, which, uh, well, kind of feels like it's becoming a trend now. Um, when we watch a winning fight again, I'll be more than happy because that will only happen in this format uh, when I win IDA. And I, I hope that will, uh, this will happen soon again. I honestly have to say, um, well, I could have done something to win this. And if I had done what I planned after last season's loss, well, then we wouldn't sit here and watch me losing again. Because what I planned was I wanted to get a really big DTV. And there is, by the way, the deciding point of the fight. Not killing that Drake. If that Drake died, that uh, fight would have gone in a whole other direction. But uh, sadly, right now, it will survive the entirety of the fight. Um, and yeah, I wanted to get a big DTV, like an S tier DTV, put 20 A30 million attack on it. And um, I think we could have punched through his team with that. But um, as it stands, he's so slowly chipping down on our heroes, killing one after the other, um, and defense down, hitting every single hero now on the PDE. And after the PDE is gone, we're of course open to getting CC'd by LFA, which is a problem. And that Drake is standing there and just surviving, which is obviously quite bad. Um, in general, I'm not that scared of those Drake teams, though. Um, the thing with those Drake teams is oftentimes they use it in combination with DTV, and then um, they tend to not even hit the hero that has defense down, which is not really scary. It becomes a whole lot scarier when people run uh, something more targeted, like an SFX, um, which will hit the hero that has defense down and will take off layers of unbending will with counterattacks and so on and get the kill just like that. And then you're uh, looking at... Two heroes on turn five uh, with little to no chance of surviving. And yeah, that is the problem. And we could have had weakness disclosure there, but as it stands, we will not even reach that. GOP has the stats to punch through the A and B on my DTV. And so we end this fight with a pretty uh, tragic no-kill scenario where we didn't get rid of any of his heroes. So pretty devastating on that. That being said, my team, not the best PvP team. You shouldn't copy that. Uh, I think there are far better versions of that. If you want to see a good version of this, um, then the next fight will be something interesting because what we are going to look at, by the way, congratulations to God of Pain for winning this uh, this group. This is something that we do not want to forget. Um, and we have to take a look at group four because group four, there is Kali and Kali is always good to take a look at. Um, if we check out Kali, Kali built a team without DTV. And I like those teams without DTV because it means we slowly get away from this weakness disclosure meta uh, towards something else. So I mainly like to show this instead of a six round weakness disclosure ending fight. Um, MFG in here, I guess as the main damage dealer. Um, we got the Star Alchemist Holmes Young. We got some basic stuff around there. HHA for survivability stunts. We got MFG for uh, MFF for survivability and stunts. Using MFG core for a good bunch of damage, I would imagine. And we have PDE to count as um, CC and SQH for some general damage. So that's rather nice. Then we have Kamilek here, also from Mega Project, running uh, SSM in here. Interesting. With a Drake to get uh, put defense down on heroes. Again, we don't really see a hero here that will definitely punch the hero that has defense down on there. Maybe that will become the problem. We will see about that. And here is the fight we are looking for. Oh, 
I didn't even see that. He lost the Drake. Oh, that's devastating. He lost the Drake against the team that uh, Kali built before. And the thing with Kali is, um, he puts effort into IDA. Like, he builds good teams. He tries to build this as optimal as possible. And you can see that when you see, like, a, a secondary team really get a kill on the main team. Um, and maybe I should do so, too. Then again, I'm always happy when I just set up my main team and uh, am done with it. And obviously, that makes it a whole lot easier for him without the th uh, threat of, um, of um, Drake putting defense on of any of his heroes and making it easy for the enemy to get a kill. We even see a mirror on the HHA, quite interesting. Um, not that impressed by mirror at the moment. It's all right of an artifact, provides some energy for your entire team. Um, I'm usually not the best friend of an energy feed team. I tried that with MFG as well. Just activates weakness disclosure on the enemy um, DTV so fast. If you run a full energy feed, can be, uh, you can see weakness disclosure on enemy DTV by as early as round three, um, which of course is no fun at all. But here we can see, yeah, Kali just shipping away on this team, getting the kills. Well, he already got the most important kill, the a fight before with his secondary team just getting rid of that Drake, and of course now that MFG can really put some damage over time on the enemies, can put some hits out. We can see it here, most of the team did a good amount of damage with damage over time and so on. MFG is staying out here for killing some stuff off. Um, would the Drake have made a difference? Possibly. I mean, like, if if um, Kamilek managed to get, like, a good kill with the um, Drake, maybe, um, what would he have killed? Can't even say all homeowners um maybe like pde or um the mff then this could have taken a turn and maybe he would have had a chance to um, to take off like one or two more heroes and we would have seen a different outcome like it is now though congratulations to kelly once again and there's rarely been a season in the recent times where i haven't said that so uh quite hyped about that next fight we're going to see um, not much about the technical side of building teams. Next one is a stat game. And if I say stat game, then I, of course, have to say Penny. And Penny, um, not the final fight against um, Core Star 99. Um, that is not the fight that I want to watch. Um, it felt, well, felt a little bit one sided, to be honest. Not that this team was bad in any way, um, but there was like a huge power disparity here. And um, Penny with like 11 billion. So we rather go and watch Norman. Because Norman um, versus Penny, that is an interesting fight. Norman has huge copies. Penny has huge copies. So let's watch that fight. And you can really see what it does when you regularly place one on the treasure train board. Penny, um, quite insane. Let's check that out for a second, by the way. Only to just notice that he just got surpassed by Toad, apparently, and two more people. And Toad, uh, yeah, I think Toad spent a fair bit. I saw a screenshot of his festival treasures, quite insane. It's not the topic of this, though. Uh, Penny, 45 five-star treasures, place four at the moment, was place one for quite some time. Um, and 28k versus where is Nomannen. Nomannen is also up here, it's not bad. It's 22k, but that's like 6k points difference. That's already a lot. Like the difference in points between the people up here um, is quite insane. So 28k points in the tre uh, treasure train, that pays off. And that is what you will see in a sec. Back to the group. And we are watching 5 billion Normannen versus Penny with a 10 billion team. You can see Norman took off two heroes here. Um, could beat the first team. And... Um, that's the fight that we're going to watch. And still, I was surprised to see how strong Penny was. You can always see it with the SQH pings. You can see it um, with just the general strength of, of those attacks and how hard they hit. And uh, I, I believe he wouldn't, would not have even needed like a, a Drake. You can see like this was an SQH hit and he uh, just nearly one shot that uh, PDE. Also like the SQH pings here really taking uh, chunks out of the shield of all of the heroes that are basically hit. You can see it like bam, 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 nearly uh, done on that SQH. And when we see the first reel, yeah, that's the DTV active. You have to see that's a DTV active. Um, those heroes there didn't even have defense down on him. Still, he nearly got like, what was it? Two kills, three kills, nearly three kills, I believe. So absolutely insane. And um, I mean, once you reach this situation, um, where you have like three heroes remaining, fighting against a stronger opponent with a super strong DTV, 
uh, then it becomes really hard to survive because like this DTV is going to hit both of those zeros quite often. It's not going to spread out over six zeros. So yeah, there you could see it's like devastating. And um, there are this SSS DTVs really paying off. Uh, you have to imagine with the treasure train stats, that's as well multiplying. Um, and he has even bigger stats now. So this DTV, I imagine, quite insane. Not sure what the home is like. That can also um, bring him some more stats. Um, but quite insane. I'm not sure why he used the LDA in here. I don't even see a need for that. I mean, it's a little bit of synergy with Drake because LDA has in its lowest HP. Um, Drake puts defense down lowest HP. So in that sense, I see a little bit of a synergy. But you, of course, are prone to losing it. Um, and if he doesn't kill himself, well, that's also not pr not quite that great. So in a way, LDA is in a weird spot. I still like him, though. And I could imagine a team coming up with him, which we might see with Mirror. But we will see about that. Uh, here, of course, Penny, insane fight. Uh, well done for this IDA win and to fight against Norman. Definitely insane. Uh, in this fight against Core, I think, yeah, I think he even got a kill. He got like two kills on his main team with the secondary team here. Uh, so also quite insane because he just got a T5 A minus um, Vulcan uh, DTV just in his back. It's not even his main DTV, that's this one. He has just a secondary one. Absolutely insane. Um, jumping to group six, I had to include this one, obviously. It's not the final fight, Kenshin versus X. It's Note 4 versus X because X nearly got clapped and we have to show that. <laughs> Which is quite important. So, where is it? Um, Ragnaru told me about it. So, of course, and Ragnaru... Uh, that's, of course, the, the thing. Ragnaru and X always uh, have a good bit of banter between them. And, um, well, <laughs> he wrote me a PM and said, yeah, I nearly got clapped by Note for sure in the video. And I was like, okay, mate, I'm going to do that. Uh, you can see it. It's like an old 4 also from a P, good guy, with a full T5 team. Looks pretty similar to mine, actually. Uh, what's the difference? I don't use the Farrakhan Vesa. What do I use instead? I use a PDE. Okay, we have a team that's a little bit more vulnerable to CC, but can sustain a little bit more damage. Okay. And um, that's fighting against X with pretty much um, the standard team uh, where we put a Drake in, A plus Drake, quite insane, and uses DTV to basically hit the Drake target, which I just talked about. Can be a little bit, well, unreliable, can still work. Can still work. It is, it is a solid choice. It is a solid choice. If it works out, it's insane. If you are unlucky and you just don't hit the target with defense down, then it can screw you over. We'll see if that was the case here. But of course, we have to show that fight. I will take a look after at one more fight and then show the winners of the other groups um, to show their success as well. Okay, lowest life. MFG, not a big fan of that because he doesn't do much as a lowest life. Then again, he's an assassin. It's kind of hard to scale stats on him. Um, we will have to see how long that MFG really survives. I, I'm quite interested in that. Uh, in general, it's quite good to have a fan on a Lost Life. I experimented a little bit with that. Usually we used to uh, do Magic Stone Sword, but the uh, all damage reduction provided by the fan, and I'm just mostly speculating here, but you seem to still keep the all damage reduction of the fan, even though it's, um, you have defense down, because you acquire it at the beginning of a round. Um, so that is like a thing, and heroes with a fan in general survive better than heroes with a crown, um, or... A, a magic stone sword. Can just not see how he lost it. Uh, probably they uh, drag it out till Node gets a weakness disclosure active. I try to be a little bit surprised by those fights, so I just look at the stats instead of watching them one time before. I mean, now the, oh, with secondary, a second lowest life, now the Ferric Investor, that is a really good lowest life hero. She can't be crit, that doesn't get removed by Drake. So um, she's particularly good as a lowest life hero. Still got punched into uh, defense stone quite fast, which is a uh, testament to all of these stats that X has. X has huge stats. He has huge copies, um, huge account in general. Uh, but uh, like we, we still have to show that. Round four. Um, again, we see the problem that I was talking about here. Just not getting this, uh, those kills fast enough. I mean, it took an average of two rounds per kill here, which is just not what you want, because that means you will get into the reach of Weakness Disclosure Active. 
Um, you really, if you use the Drake, want to kill your enemy before turn 6, because otherwise you just risk him killing your entire team with one single actor from a DTV. Um, so, like in that sense, I, I can see why Jesus, for example, tends to use a Panda, or somebody like Daiko even uses too, uh, just to make this fight. And early on there we have it, Weakness Disclosure activated on the um, DTV of Node 4, and now is the question, does he have enough charges? Does he have enough damage to kill off all of those heroes? Because um, even if you have weakness disclosure, you still need those charges um, for your active skill, which is hard if there aren't many heroes on your team surviving to do something. Ooh. Oh, just two enemies surviving. I mean, you would think that this is possible, right? In general, if you see this situation just without knowing any stats, I would say, like, that Node 4 could do it. Because, like, if you have a DTV and the HHA versus a PDE and an SQH, difficult one. Then again, SQH, she heals, PDE heals. And it's all a question of whether or not you can get to the next weakness disclosure active of uh, DTV, I guess. Oh, but we can see... Uh, I think I think the main problem that he got here was that X actually invested a fair bit into the tenants of his SQH, so he has quite a big SQH. So that might be a problem. Uh, DTV just used up all of his layers of Unbending Will. So, oh, there it is, yeah. You could see it just punched through the shield, punched through all of the life, and um, basically won him that, so that investment into the SQH really paid off. Um, but yeah, you can see the problem here. Having Drake and not killing off enemies fast enough, that can slowly escalate to be a problem. Of course, you had like three heroes that didn't do a whole lot in here, not four. But in the end, you only need DTV to survive long enough to get the weakness disclosure active, to get the hits out. And um, just sadly, he didn't quite have enough damage here. He didn't get those hits. Maybe one or two hits more on the SQH would have been enough to kill her. But as it is... She just could build up her damage, could build up a bit of corruption on the DTV and get the kill here. But nearly got X and that would have been quite surprising and quite fun. I think um, they have a pretty big power difference as well. Let's check that out, by the way. Uh, that's a 2 billion, I guess. With 8 teams, it seems. And let's see that. What the hell did he even do? <laughs> also, all level 105 stars. I have no idea. So 10 teams and he has like nearly 6 billion. So weird. Okay, we can't really compare that. Okay, last fight. Oh, and congratulations to X for winning that group. No, don't want to forget that. If we show him nearly losing here, we at least want to congratulate him to um to nearly or to winning this group. Um let's jump to group 8. One more fight we want to look at. It's Pira. Pira got to place 2 in this group without even using DTV, with a pretty interesting team with Mockman and LFA, LFA core. He explained that to me in the Discord. He said he wanted to counter HHA core by stacking CI on his heroes. And apparently those heroes have like 100% um, protection against um, taunt if you f factor in the CI they have and the um, protection against taunt from guild tech uh, and the core of DTV providing uh, CI as well. So that is the thing. Did that work out? Not that much. <laughs> uh, he pretty much low rolled on, on his uh, control immunity because, of course, enemy the enemy has some CI offset from star spawns and the um, HHA core, enemy HHA core um, that never more ran has like a 100% chance to control. So uh, that given that, it's all a game of the CI and the CI offset. And that gave him a, I, I would say, still a pretty sizable chance to CC um, or and to taunt with his HHA. Well, and he double taunted basically. And you can see how, um, how basically a HHA core can destroy a team because those two were his main damage dealers and also his um, highest attack heroes, which means they got targeted by HHA. And uh, yeah. That fight didn't end well. I was looking at this and listen, was like, ooh! Because you can see, like, Pyrrhus team falling uh, together and falling to shambles here um, and just not doing what it is supposed to do, which was bursting down with, uh, which, with SSM 
which did nothing because it just hit uh, the enemy HHA and CCing with the LFA, which also did not work because LFA was also just hitting um, HHA and at the same time, um, Nevermore can just easily hit all of the heroes of Pyra and brings this to quick end. So sadly, a strategy, I mean, it was well thought out. If you can't really get two heroes as your third and fourth highest attack and just keep them relevant, um, then this is an interesting way of trying to get around this HHA core. Because like usually if you have if you are like a big whale, you have one or two or usually two heroes that are your highest attack heroes and that you don't really care about for the strategy of your team. For my team, um that's MFF, for example. MFF is has pretty high attack. I have MFG with pretty high attack, I have DTB with pretty high attack, and um HHA as well. Usually the two heroes that you will hit when you target highest attack are my HHA and my MFF and of course my damage dealers MFG and DTV are safe then on, on third and fourth highest attack. But you can only really do that when you can have your when you have enough resources to give your third and fourth highest attack relevant attack values. If having your third and fourth highest attack be your damage dealers and they have like I don't know like four million attack, well that's not really going to work out. So if you don't have that um, kind of account that can be big enough to do that with the strategy with like third highest attack being your damage dealer or something, um, then you come into a situation where you have struggled to do PvP at the moment. And Pyra found a nice way around it. So that is a loss, yeah, but it's a nice strategy. So, and it's a good way, maybe even for some of you guys to, to take a look at and see if you can do something similar to get around stuff like HHA core. And in general, it's, it shows something that I really like about Idle Heroes. Giving some thought to it and trying to find a way around mechanics or um, trying to work with mechanics in the game. And he looked at HHA core, found a creative way to solve it, which didn't work out in the last fight, but worked out in multiple fights before. So that's great. And therefore, well, still a well-deserved win for Nevermore. But a good attempt by Pyra. So let's look at the other group winners. We skipped some of them. Group 7, for example, is Jesus once again. Sadly, Bloop um, couldn't do it. Well, we didn't expect him to because, like, it's Jesus, mate. It's Jesus. That's pure insanity. Like, we can take a look at it for a second. SS Normal Vessa as a tenant, SS Flora as a tenant, SS Vulcan as a tenant, and yeah, like, S Gurky. So, like, yeah. At bad luck with the group. Next time, Loop, you will do it. I'm pretty sure of that. We are all sure of that. Group 9, won by M. M, good guy, was with me in Paragon a while ago. Even in Chronicles, if I remember correctly. And, um, yeah, good win. GG to that. And then we have groups 1, 2, 3 that we have to check out. One Mega Fungi, we all know him, of course. Has grown to uh, some fame in recent times. Um, all because this lucky guy pulled an SSQAH, which I think he sold, got himself an STTV for that. Which I'm not jealous at all of, which uh, not uh, just didn't talk about a few seconds ago that I wanted to buy one. And he now has one, showed it to me, after sending me the video of this SSQAH pull. No, it didn't make me jealous at all. Not at all. Um, in this group as well, Skarloey lost to Mega Fungi, sadly. Skarloey bringing one good attempt after the other, honestly, um, in the recent seasons. We also I always see him like in this right corner, and I'm eager to see him in the final, maybe in the next season. I sure hope so. And I'm just waiting for a day where he suddenly uh, or finally grabs that place one, and we can all congratulate on that. For now, congratulations to Mega Fungi. Well deserved win. Really grown his account quite a bit if you want to check that out. It's quite insane. Uh, group 2, nothing to say here. It's just Daiko uh, once again uh, saving his place here at the uh, top of one of the groups. And I think it's like its 20th win in IDA. I don't think we have to talk much about it. Again, with the double panda team, by the way, we showed it in the last season. So quite good. And the last one, Gore versus Woodworks. Woodworks, again with place two, I think we showed him there like three times already, if I remember correctly. Um, good guy, good lad, I really want to see him win IDA. Um, but he always has bad luck with the groups and gets like one or one, another insane opponent. And this time, insane opponent's name is Gore, strong guy from Mega Project. One 
of the members that he was a member even before I was a member. I think, well, then that being said, what am I talking about? I'm not even a member for that long in Omega Project. <laughs> but I think as far as I can remember, Gore has been a member of Omega Project. So it's like one of the OG guys there. And uh, well, bad luck for Woodworks to have him in the group. But again, pretty solid performance by Woodworks. And with that, we've shown all groups actually and congratulate all of the winners of this season of IDA and we will see us in the next one.